Hi everybody, Tom Pagano here and welcome to Alto Pictures Presents. Guns to law, fucking wars, drugs to take and bets to make. It's been a while since we did the last show, but we have some good things happening in the future. And it's always been a show about music, but we're expanding our horizons here at Alto Pictures Presents. It's going to be plenty more music, and it's going to be a lot of interesting things to talk about. And today's subject is a very important subject, uh, one that I learned about later in life, but it's one that we all should open up ourselves to and embrace. It's called it's mental health. Um, I have a special guest here today, Alice Byrne. How are you doing, Alice? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Good. Alice and I have been friends for many years, but uh, Alice has a very, well, I would say a unique story, but it's probably more common than, than we realize. But uh, Alice, just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little background. About like with mental to, health? Just, just you in general. Tell, tell us a little bit well, about um, you. You know, I'm from Ireland, Dublin, and um, I've lived in the States for 28 years. And I've gone through a lot of uh, mental health issues over the years, and I ended up hospitalized a couple of times. So um, now I'm working on Manic Panoramic, which is a, a live presentation, and it's... Um, it's understandable. You see, that's the most important part of it all, is to help people understand what it's all about. Because people tend to run the other way, you know, when when somebody is down and out and just not pleasant to be around. So okay. that's my goal. That's that's what I want to do, and I want to end the stigma too. The stigma I, is a huge thing. I think manic panoramic. You know, you you've talked to me, and we talked about that a long time, and mm -hmm. I think that's an incredible uh, undertaking and uh, project and I'm proud of you for that and, Thank you. and and it's a thing that a lot of people should know know about but before we get into the meat of manic panoramic Al, uh, Alice is quite a creative person musically uh, she actually designed my studio here and designed my house and everybody that comes into the house is like, wow your house is so unique and Alice is the first to say, and well, I did it, and she did, and she, and she did, and she did a great job. So, me and Alice, we played together in a band uh, years ago called the Bloodhounds, and Alice also sang um, jazz. So I'm going to go to a few clips to show you Alice, the singer, uh, singing a little bit of jazz and a little bit of punk rock. So. Travel my way, take the highway, that's the best And get your kicks on Route 66 It winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way Well, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, I did. We had a lot of, a lot of good times with uh, the Bloodhounds and... Alice had, had, you know, quite the career as a, a jazz singer and and an artist. And she, like I said, she's done many great things. But this is her latest venture, which is very important. It's called Manic Panoramic. And I'm looking at, you know, a little bit of the story here. 
And tell me about your younger days. It says you were a, a rebel, a joker, a dead Oh, devil. yeah. So I tell, was me, all tell, about... tell me a little bit about that. I was always um, like the life and soul of the party. You know, everyone would invite me to their parties because I was always just having great times and great fun. I was a rebel in school. I got kicked out of school, two schools, mm. two high schools. And, um, you know, I was, I was the daredevil. I would do anything anyone dared me to do, you know. But at the end of the day, I ended up being the scapegoat. Yeah. So if there was something going on, Alice was the first one to be blamed. You know what I mean? So. And, and it says in here, it says, and you suffered quite a, uh, a lot, bit at night because nobody really understood, or you didn't uh, possibly at that, at that time. I didn't, un- yeah. I had no idea. What, what, what you were going through. And... Uh, I cried all night. Like I would come home from a party where I was the life and soul of the party and I'd come home and I'd cry for the rest of the night. So that's pretty much what you learn now is, you know, manic Why? depression. Why? Yes. You have the extreme highs to extreme lows. And, and exactly. You were, and you were experiment, experiment, experiencing that and you didn't even know. Well, the doctors said nobody really knew at the time. Nobody knew, you know. And it says, you know, twice in your life uh, you, you were suicidal. Well, yeah, really three yeah. times, but it, it, but there, there were one time when I was 16 and I didn't know why and I just wanted to die. And um, I, I, I went to where I was going to do that, but I ended up turning around. And then um, a couple of other times I was thankfully hospitalized yeah. because without that I wouldn't be here. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, what your experience with, with the hospital. Um, Says, here it says what, why you are here and why are you here. And you have a lot of information about mental illness to saying that, you know, there are over 20 classified forms of mental illness. No, there's actually 200. 200. It's such a new area that nobody or is just starting to open, open eyes to people. And they still, I don't think, still know how to react to. People don't a, get it. They don't understand. It's very hard to understand. But that's the goal of what I'm doing. So... I'm going to help people to understand better and uh, be able to help others. You have a list here of uh, famous people. And, oh, yeah. And it, it seems um, sad that most of the creative people in our lives suffer through some kind of mental illness. Yeah. You have Carrie Fisher, Mel Gibson, uh, Russell Brand, uh, Kurt Cobain. Uh, Kanye West, Frank Sinatra, you know, the, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Um, do you think that being, you know, did that help you with your creativity or... Did what help me? Did the mental illness, you know, just not, you know, looking at everything, you know, black and white, you know, there's always had a little bit of, you know, gray area. Did that help you with your creativity, you think? Oh, I think and, it's part of it, you know, I because I jump from one project to the next. Um, you know, but yeah, I, I am quite creative, but uh, that's just me. Yeah. In, in a sad cause, uh, there's been a lot of people, you know, recently that have committed suicide. Yeah. You know, that were, you know, uh, that were, you know big artists in, in our life that we looked up to, and um, un- unfortunately, they didn't get the help that they needed, and Kudos to you again for spreading the word, you know, to make this more available to people. And here you have a little, thing, you know, interesting thing about the brain. Uh, oh, it's uh, one of my favorite subjects. I love, I love the brain. So, uh, so tell us about it a little bit. You know, I love the brain. We have a love-hate relationship, you know, me and the brain, <laughs> because um, I hate it when I'm depressed, but I love it when I'm manic. And um, the brain is just a miraculous machine, you know. There's uh, seven octillion atoms in a brain that's a lot a brain can power a light bulb you know what i'm talking yeah. about if it was a if it was a computer it could uh power up 38 something like 38 billion um what is it operations per minute yeah yep yeah. well it's so i guess you know that, like you said that makes it uh so much harder for us to really understand the brain you know be the doctors don't even understand it all that's the problem that's mm-hmm. why there's no cure because you know even the doctors are baffled by it half the time that you know all they can rely on is medication yeah so we want to step back uh a little bit please uh 
about you and your, your daughters. You have a little clip here about um, raising your daughters and your situation, you know. Well, bring, bring, tell us about, you know, that Yeah, experience. well, I raised my kids for 14 years. They were with me. And, um, you know, I had a tough time with my young, my, my oldest daughter. Um, because of the mental illness, I was lashing out at her a lot and leaving my younger daughter alone. And um, I have terrible regret about all of that, but I was out of control. I, I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, to, on, on, you know, I don't want to give a complete, you know, dark view, but you said here, you know, you, you know during the day, you know, in the times, you know, you and your kids went to a lot of festivals and... Yeah, you know, we a, did you, tons you, of great you, you stuff. You had a lot of good times. You were a secretary, a recep, uh, sec, uh, receptionist, and I know you were a carpenter, obviously. <laughs> and But but you, you explained here a lot of good times, and then you went to a little bit of the darkness that you did. That, so that's part of the manic, uh, the bipolar. Yes. The, the, you know, those... The highs and the lows. And So when you're high, you're manic which everybody loves to be manic, you know, because you get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. But um, when you're low, it's the total opposite. You get nothing done. You want to die. You and so, so it's like, here, here, here's level. So and when you're manic, you're up here. And yes. when you're down, you're equally as low below that line. Exactly. Of that, whatever normal is. All right, uh, October 22nd, 2012, Hurricane Sandy. Uh, hit yeah. uh, the northeast. Yeah, and, that was a tough one. And it kind of hit you a little bit harder. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, my um, while uh, the the storm hit, and we had to get out of town, and there was a, only one way to do that, and that was by car. The planes were all grounded, and um, so we started driving to Texas. I arranged for my kids to go to their dad's house because he had a generator. And um, as you know, the, the roads were mm -hmm. unbelievable with the trees down and all, and lines, no power, no electric, no heat. And, um, so anyway, um, my daughter and I had some words on the phone when, when we were both away. And um, when I got back, the house was empty. The kids' bedrooms were totally empty. And they had taken everything and left. So um, obviously, I spiraled into a depression. It took about a year before I got so bad where I just wanted to die. Mm -hmm. And um, I was heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken about my kids not living with me anymore. And I mean, I was so bad, I just gave up in court. I didn't even want to fight anymore. Yeah. And then have you, you and your kids reconciled since then? Well, one of my daughters, my youngest daughter, we always stayed in touch and she actually lives with me now. But um, my oldest daughter, no, it's been ten years. Yeah. So that's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, it is. Good. It's tough, all right. And so we now, now we we know the story on the outside of you know being mad again, and you said you went to the hospital a couple of times. I heard the hospital's not a very pleasant, and it helped you out. But in, tell us about going into the hospital and what it was like. God, yeah, it wasn't pleasant at all. Um, you first obviously go to your waiting room, you get checked in, and then I was sent to um, another way, another room with a bed in it and everything, and there was a, a police officer standing at the door, and the door was wide open, so I couldn't do anything. What was I going to do in that situation? But um, I eventually fell asleep, and I woke up outside of a big black van in a wheelchair and I was lifted up out of the wheelchair and put into the back of the van and there was only enough room for one person in there and it was pitch black there was no windows and I was terrified and um, eventually got to the hospital the psychiatric hospital and um, next I can remember being in the hallway and having the shoelaces taken off my shoes and having the strings taken off my hoodie and um, you know, it's, it was all very regimented. And then I get handed a patch for a smoking patch and, um, and I get some medication. So, uh, I so ended, ended like, up there for five days. So it sounds like 
a very scary situation. That sounds like almost mili- uh, prison. Yeah, it is very prison like in uh, even the the um the only place we could go outside was a courtyard mm-hmm. and the walls were god they they should could have been 30 feet high wow. you know and that's all that's the only outside activity that we had you you say that you know the hospital helped you and, and but it, it kind of sounds uh when, yeah, when, when it, you're it, in a, in a situation it almost sounds like really is really not good I mean but yeah it's wh- unfortunate how um, they they conduct themselves I just I don't get it but in the long term but in the long know, term yeah. they saved my life uh-huh. so I have to kind of stand back a little and uh-huh. just say okay well it was tough and it wasn't pleasant but I'm here today yeah. so well, that's, that's always a good thing yes <laughs> okay um, um, been through a uh, uh, I guess a roller coaster ride of medication. Oh yeah. And how long does it? You know, I mean, I know you, you say now that you they finally got it right, but the going through the years of you know trial and error must be crazy. And I guess, like you said before, the brain is such a miraculous machine. Machine that yeah. it, you, it's hard to figure out it, and and it is, you almost have to go through that. Uh, trial and error to get it right. And right. So you. So tell me about how you're feeling now, and you know, with the medication being. Well, I feel great. I I feel like finally it's um I'm on the right path, you know. I'm still a bit manic, but that's okay. I like to be manic, um, but yeah, like I did a good thirty years of being on different medications, and being diagnosed different things. You know, so the hospital sorted all that out. They, it's, it's like they saw it straight away, exactly what I was, what was, what the problem was. Well, it's, you know? well, it's, well, it's, it's good, but it, 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 you know, I guess like you know, it's when you go to a doctor for a sore throat, they know exactly what they're looking for. Yeah. And and they know the root, you know, the area to take. Uh, with mental illness, like you said, there's over 400 types of mental illness. 200, 200. yeah. Um, it's not that easy, and it's understandable. And, and again, uh, it's important that it all comes into light. And, again, the value of your show, Manic Panoramic, is uh, in- incredible, and, and, and it's... A service that we all, I think, it's, it's do you, I, I believe it's probably going to be a little struggle to get it out there, but it, yeah, but it, it's it's you, definitely be, a struggle. I've been trying, and um, just I need to get that first booking, you know. But uh, but it's worth the fight. It, it is definitely worth the fight. I'll be fighting it forever. Yep, and you have a, a couple little things here that uh, are quite interesting. It's the power of music, and we are water. Explain it. The power of music. Well, music, I mean, doesn't it open up all kinds of emotions? You know, you listen to a song from the 80s and you just want to dance or, you know, something, another slow song makes you think of your first boyfriend or things like that, you know. Music is so good for the soul. It, um, and, and water, it's, uh, we're, we're 70% water. So it's no doubt that, it's no um, surprise rather that we're drawn to water. So um, a study was done uh, a few years ago about the effects of water on people who live close to it and who don't live close to it. And the people who live close to water have much better health and well-being than the people who don't live close to water. So I would suggest that everybody, even if you don't, if you live near a river or a, a dock or whatever, go down and sit by the water. It's very meditative. Oh, it's it, uh, so. I guess that's why people that sit on the beach and listen to the radio are probably the happiest people in the world because you have both. Yeah, the, absolutely. You, you have, have, yeah. You have <laughs> the best of both worlds. Mm. So you're. Um, you know, we're going to bring this to a close in a little bit, but you, you say you, you are under, you know, control now that you you found the right medicine. It, it, it's a continual continuation thing. It's not something that maybe right now we can cure. It's, no, it, it's, there's it's, no cure. 
it's it's a lifelong regimen of medication but i have fabulous doctors and they have me only on two pills a day now i was on six Mm -hmm. and only two now so i'm very happy with how it's all going so i'm glad to hear that and congratulations on that thank you and um what are important things to know about people with mental illness and how should people react to it? Because, you know, cause like you said, it's, it's important re- things. Well, it, like I said, it's very misunderstood, and, and everybody, you know, you be on a down day and somebody says, ah, grab your boots up and just go face the day, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. How's, yeah, you know, some people will react like that, unfortunately, but. Um, how how you how know, how do you handle how do you how do you handle well just just like I, being with people yeah, with depression or, or the best way okay to, you know, well the them. best thing is to give you give them as much love as possible hugs kisses you know the simple things in life you know get them out for a walk take them out for a cup of coffee go go down to the river go wherever but get them out of the house when you get to the house open the blinds turn on some music get them in the shower throw water at them. Throw water at them. <laughs> no. Um, get them to take a shower because yeah. that's one thing. When people are depressed, they don't want to do anything. Yeah. So they lay around for days without showering and and it's so good to get them up and out and so it, it, help them in that it's way. It's basically be a good, honest person. Yes. You know, I guess yes. that goes true to everybody. Um, you, don't, you don't say, now you have to get up and get out for a walk. You, you you turn up at the door and you say, come on, we're going to go for a walk. That's what you do. Actions. Yes, actions, actions way louder than words. All right, um, Alice, it's been great speaking with you. So tell, tell us how people get a hold of you and uh, what are your plans for going forward with Manic Panoramic? Well, the plan is to get into as many schools and colleges as I can and other institutions, you know, it doesn't have to be schools or colleges. Um, It can be private events too, you know, Um, as a public speaker and um, just get out there and do it. I'm I'm excited, you know, I really want to get the message out because it's so important and it's an epidemic. Yeah. It is, you know, mental health is an absolute epidemic in this country. That's my goal. I want to get rid of the, the stigma. You know, that's an awful thing to live with, you know, being called crazy and mental and all of these things. Um, And I just want to get the word out and spread the word and save lives. So that's it. uh, And I think you will do that. And I continue the best of luck. And thank you. And I'm proud of you. And just give us a I'll put I'll put up on the screen the best way to contact you for uh, presentation yes. or just talk and spread the word um, about the show um, it'll be airing on my YouTube channel and Alice will be putting it up on her channel but more importantly spread the word about Manic Panoramic uh, and, and really took me a while and to understand because it's something I never dealt with before it was uh, mental illness and I was probably one of those people that said, I get them and just put on you know, a smiley face and go out there and face the world. But uh, I know it's, it's not that easy now, and I've learned a lot, but I don't know it all, and I don't think anybody knows it all. So it's, it's an ongoing experience, and with pro- programs like Manic Panoramic, it's nothing to do anything but help, and this is a big, important issue. And I thank Alice again for being on on Alto Pictures Presents. And we're going to take it out with a little bit more music from Alice. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. So the sun and west of the moon will build a dream house of love, dear. Close to the sun in the day, near to the moon at night. We'll live in lovely waiting, sharing our love in the pale moonlight. Just you and I, forever and a day. Love will not die, 
We'll keep it that way Up among the stars we'll find A harmony of life to